In today's video, you will learn how to scrape data or extract data from pretty much any web page out there on the web. You will also learn how to send clicks and text and interact with that web page. Combining these two things, we are going to build a bot, a super simple bot that is going to unfollow friends from Twitter. To build this, we are going to be using Microsoft Power Automate Desktop. It's gonna be great. Microsoft Power Automate Desktop is a completely free technology available from Microsoft. It should be available on your Windows 11 by default. If you are using a Windows 10, you can download it from free from Microsoft Shop. So this is going to be the process that we are going to be building. This is a quick overview of this tool, but this video is actually for anybody, even for veterans in Microsoft Power Automate Desktop. Why? Because we're going to be also going over a couple of updates that have been done in Microsoft Power Automate. So let's check them out straight away. I have already created the process and I have added the actions that we are going to require to automate this or to create a bot that is going to unfollow friends from Twitter. We see that it is a very simple drag and drop tool. All of the actions that we need to use, like clicking on different things, opening the browser, are on the left hand side under the actions. All of the things that we need to configure and variables and things, interactions with our browser are on the right side. In the center, we have our bot or our automation. It flows from upwards to downwards. So the first thing that it does, it launches Chrome and does different things. Now, Microsoft Power Automate has been already around for over a year and some things have been changed most recently. The first thing is that there is no web recording and desktop recording feature. There is just one button to record everything that you're doing. So that is one of the main updates and also many of the uh, actions that were previously grouped together, they have been regrouped right now. So let's see how we can build this bot from scratch. So the first thing that we should do is create a new bot and we're going to call it unfollow. So let's start. This is Microsoft Power Automate. If this is your first time checking out this tool, it is super simple. So we're going to go to the to the actions as we discussed before and we're going to look for an action that is going to allow us to open the uh, open a browser. So this is the action that we're going to do. We're going to launch uh, launch Chrome and we're going to go to the Twitter page that we want to automate. This is going to be the Twitter page that we're going to go. We're going to navigate directly to our web page to the following part and we're going to take this link directly so that we uh, don't have to automate all of the different steps. One super important tip when creating your automations is to create as little steps as possible. So try to avoid uh, navigating through the application if you can go there just with the link. So we're going to maximize this as well and we're going to save. Now you're ready to try out your first robot. When you click run, your robot is going to activate and is going to launch Google, uh, is going to launch Google Chrome and go to the Twitter page that we wanted to unfollow people from. So uh, it worked so far. And now what do we have to do? Now we have to click on this button and then click on this button. And that is all we have to do. And then click on the next button and the next one and the next one and so on until we have finished unfollowing all of our friends. So let's see how we can do that. Let's minimize this screen and let's use the simplest way there is. Let's click on the record button. With the record button, we can capture all of the pages that we have, or all we can interact with pretty much anything that is here. Once we click record, this is going to pop up. So uh, there has been also some updates here as well. So uh, image recording has been added into the, into the menu and you can also launch a new web browser from here as well. This was a feature not available in the previous version. So let's click on the record and let's see what we have to do. So we have to click on this button right here. And then, so let's click on it. And we can see that actions have been created. So it uh, it created the, uh, the, the action to click on this div. Now we're gonna click on this div as well. One important thing, is that as you see, as I'm <clears throat> hovering over the different elements, different elements are being highlighted. Uh, those are the elements that you are going to spy. Always, if you're trying to spy, try to spy for the link. If you're looking for a link or a button, if you want to click, click a button. If that is not the case, try to always get 
uh, an element that is stable. So I will explain in a second what that means. So let's click on unfollow and then let's repeat this process one more time. So let's click right here and unfollow. Why did I click on more than one button? Because we have to click on all of these unfollow buttons. And in a second, I will show you how we're going to do that. So we have created all of the different elements that we need for our automation and we can click finish. And just like magic, we see that uh, things have been added into our, into our canvas for our robot. I will remove all of the different steps that we don't need. So uh, also launch Google Chrome and we are left with click on different links. Just to show you, this is a action that is this action right here. So we could have dragged and dropped it in here or we could have just recorded it. So you can choose how you can build your process. You can either use the recorder or you can drag and drop different actions and build it however you want. So let's see, uh, let's see one more thing. So the other thing that we see here is when we click on the UI elements, we see that some things have been created for us. These are our anchors or our connections with the browser. And right here, we can also see the picture that was taken. So if I need to interact with this button, I can call it using this this action right here. So you see here div2, div3, div2, and these are the divs here. If I wanted to fine tune it, and this is what we're going to do right here, we're going to click inside of it and fine tune this. Now, this is super extremely simple. It looks complicated because it's just a bunch of gibberish code, but this is nothing more than just the, uh, the hierarchy of the web page in terms of HTML. So as you can see, this is HTML then the body, then a couple of divs, the main, and then more divs. And if you inspect the element on the page that you are automating, you will find that it has exactly the same hierarchy. So what we are trying to do right now is we are trying to automate the different follow buttons. So how we can do that? We can do that by creating a dynamic selector. So uh, a dynamic selector, this is called a selector because it's selecting the unfollow button. So uh, to do that, we have to look for something that changes between one and another button. Remember that previously I told you that we're going to spy two buttons. So we spied this one and this one. So now we're going to look for the differences between those two buttons. So let's go and look for the differences between those two buttons, this one and this one. So let's take, let's take the second one and let's copy all of this. And then let's go back to our first selector and let's create a new selector. Now let's observe if anything changes when I paste this. All right. So I, I saw this number change right here. So if we change this number and we put, for example, like six, we're going to click on button number six. So that is what I discovered just now and what I was looking for. So let's, uh, let's right now, uh, we don't need, we don't need this. We were just looking for the place where our selector was changing. So what do we have to do right now? Well, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to test our automation and see if it's working. And after that, we're going to make it so that it's going to click on all of the buttons. Right now, let's just test it and see if it just works by itself. So uh, we need the div2, which is the second unfollow. So we can remove this and we can remove this. One important thing to notice is this speed right here. This is the speed of your process. Now, with your process, uh, with uh, with this speed, this is uh, th this is a really fast speed, meaning that your process is going to go really, really fast. You don't really want that. You want a process that is going to go a little bit slower because the web page is not going to respond that fast. So what we're going to do is we can either change this or we can look for a weight. So let's look for a weight and let's add just a simple weight of two seconds. So we're going to add a simple weight of, let's make it three seconds just to be sure. And that's pretty much it. Now we can try our process. Let's add two, two weights. Actually, we're going to go to the page and then we're going to uh, add a weight after this. Weights are important because we want to act as if we are a human. We are making an automation that is super fast, but Twitter is not built for super fast automation and it's going to break. So that's why we have to make it a little bit slower, our robot. Now let's try it out and see what happens. 
So it opened the page that we were spying on. It's going to the following page and it has clicked on, uh, not really sure what happened. So let's try it one more time. Let's add one more weight right here. And let's try our process one more time. So it is opening uh, Twitter. It is going to the correct page and it is uh, waiting three seconds. It is waiting three seconds again, and then it should unfollow the person. So we see that we have unfollowed this person. Now, the next step is that we have to unfollow all of these people. Super, super, super easy to do. So we're going to do that using a loop. A loop is nothing more than like a cycle. So if we have to cycle through the different things, we're going to use a loop. There is a couple of different loops. Uh, we're going to use the simplest one, which is just a loop. And in this loop, we're going to tell, uh, we're going to tell it, you're going to start at zero or you're going to start from number one and you're going to end at uh, let's say 10 and you're going to increment also by one so you're going to do 10 cycles you're going to click on the unfollow button 10 times so this is also going to produce a loop index what is a loop index a loop index is just a number that tells us all right we are clicking on the fourth button on the fifth button on the sixth button it's just something that changes in every sequence of our process now let's move all of these steps inside of our loop once uh, all of these steps are inside our loop uh, we can test out our process and see what happens and if it's clicking on all of the different buttons that we need so this is eight steps and in the beginning we said that we're going to build a super simple process in eight steps so let's see if we manage to do so so it went to the following page it is clicking on the first link or on the uh, on the second but it is just going to break why is it going to break and you see that it clicked on the same button and it's going to click on the same button why because we didn't change one thing we didn't change this selector so we have this button right here and it's always clicking on the same one remember previously that we went and looked for the part where it changes and it was i i believe it was right here where it changed from one to two so we're going to cancel this and we're going to add the variable here that we saw previously loop index that is going to be a number from one to ten from one until ten and that should allow us to did i update this let's check it out so this is our variable right here so yes i did and uh, this is going to allow us to click on the different buttons so let's run the process and let's see if it's working and now it should click on the unfollow now it should click on the next button and it should click on the unfollow again now since the unfollow is always the same button we then have to do the selector trick on the unfollow button so we have created an automation that is going to unfollow 10 friends and we can change that number however we like or we can change the automation in different ways remember there is really many different ways that an automation can be done so this is just one way that it that i have created but once you learn how to use Microsoft Power Automate, you will have hundreds of different ways and ideas on how to create the same automations. RPA champions, I hope that you have enjoyed this video. I wanted to bring your attention to two different things. I will be creating an amazing course for the citizen developer that is coming out real soon. And at the same time, I would like you to check out the automation, the only automation company NFT that is out there. Process Lens is creating an NFT and I'm the CEO of Process Lens. So do go and check it out and please let me know your opinion about it. I really want the uh, automation community to get involved in this NFT and not just, uh, just flippers or people that are currently getting interested in just purchasing the NFT and, uh, and holding it or flipping it. So automation champions, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.